Hey guys, my name is Mitsumi Aum, and welcome to your episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the format out of the way real quick, if you'd like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. The first question for today is, did you see that Ubisoft isn't happy with the CAV ban rate in Rainbow Six Siege, and plans to balance her? I did see that. The question that I have though, and the reason why I'm a bit confused by this statement, is I just don't know how they're going to rework her. A lot of people when they saw this announcement automatically assumed that this meant that Ubisoft was going to nerf her. Try to reduce her influence so that she's nowhere near as powerful, so that in the hopes that she isn't going to be sidelined as often. And while that would be a good way of going about it, I don't think that's probably the way that they should handle things, considering she has one of the weaker win rates and pick rates, at least for PC, Platinum, and Diamond players. Like, she's really nothing to write home about. She can hold her own, but she's definitely not one of, even close to one of the best operators in the game for defense. I believe that one of the things that the pick and ban system has really illustrated is that players would much rather sideline someone because they're just frustrating to go against, not necessarily because they're blatantly overpowered. A really good example of this is Jackal. Jackal recently got a significant nerf, like he is nowhere near as powerful as he used to be, but he is constantly still sidelined on a basically every single one of the games that I play in ranked. And I have a suspicion that same thing applies to Cab. I don't know about you guys, but every time I get down by her, I always get a sinking feeling, because I know that I just put my team in a really precarious situation. If she's able to get her ability off, it basically compromises everyone on offense and I just not necessarily lost the round for my team but how many times has that happened where there's like a minute left and it basically just kind of ruins all momentum that you had while everyone was trying to uh, play the objective it's not a fun moment and I think that's really what gets to the heart of the issue no one likes when that happens then obviously she's super stealthy I mean that that kind of adds to it but I think that kind of gets to the core of why she's probably sidelined so often. And so the question is now is how does Ubisoft go about reworking her without just nerfing her into oblivion and making her obsolete? One way they could go about it is to try to find a middle ground. Right now she is high risk, high reward. Either she provides really no benefit to the defensive team if she's not able to get her ability off, but if she does, she basically just flat out wins the game for her side. And so if they're able to find a middle ground where it was less binary so that in a match she was able to use her ability more frequently, but it didn't have as large of an impact on the overall performance of a match. That could be one way of trying to reworking her, but I really don't know how they would be able to do that in a realistic way. This really is what makes her the operator that she is, and as soon as you change something dramatically, is it really Cav at that point? And so let me know what you guys think on this topic. I think it's really interesting that Ubisoft is able to use this information to kind of figure out what operators need changing, but I just don't know how they're gonna be able to do it, but at the same time, keep the essence of why people like playing as this operator. Now, so if you guys have any unique ideas on how Ubisoft might be able to go about it, give me your guys' thoughts down below. The next question comes from Ian, and it is Sunday Mailbox idea. Rook armor for two and three armored operators would prevent the one shot down from Kali. I don't know about you guys, but I don't find Kali to be overpowered whatsoever and doesn't need to see a change like this because as soon as you do that, you would basically just make her completely obsolete. It's already really difficult if you're going against players that know what they're doing to actually play Kali properly. Now, I am not the best sniper in Siege. I'll be completely honest, I find those weapons to be very unwieldy and I have a difficult time actually lining up my shots and being consistent. And so maybe I'm not the best person to to respond here, but even for people that I do watch that are really good with those kinds of weapons, they struggle because as soon as you miss that one shot, you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. Most people, especially at those higher tiers, are going to be holding really tight angles, and so a lot of their body really isn't even going to be exposed or visible to someone who is about to push the objective. And so while it's great that she has that one shot potential, it doesn't matter when the only thing that's on the open is someone 
someone's face. Like, you would be better off using any other character in the game in those kinds of situations. And so I feel like it's because of all of those weaknesses that if all of a sudden someone like Rook, one of the more popular operators in the game, if he had the ability to then protect everyone who was two armor or even three armor, or even if it was just three armored operators, they would no longer get downed with that one shot. That would just make her useless. Maybe I'll change my opinion in the next couple of weeks or months when people get really comfortable with her and figure out how to use her properly, but currently, I think she already has plenty of weaknesses and this would just kind of push things over the top. And so all in all, while I do understand where you're coming from, Rook would be the obvious choice if there needs to be a counter like it, but I just don't think that is necessary whatsoever, at least right now, but that is just my two cents. The next question is, have you had a chance to try the recent Battle for 5 update? What did you think of the new TTK? So I think it's safe to say that the community is not a fan of the most recent changes to Battlefield 5. If you're not aware of what happened, basically DICE not too long ago changed the time to kill on pretty much every single one of the weapons in the game so that they now take significantly longer to drop people at a distance and it hasn't really gone well amongst the player base. Now you might be asking yourself, wait a second, didn't they do this? Like a year ago, right when the game came out, they changed the TTK and then they realized that the player base didn't like it and then they changed it back? Yeah, they did that again for who knows what reason. The question that I think is on everyone's mind right now is why did DICE decide to do this now, a year after release? By and large, the community, I think, was having a more positive reception to the game overall. The Pacific content that came out about a month ago was really well received. I think most people feel like that. Th those are some of the best maps that have been introduced into Battlefield in quite some time. Things seemed like they were on the up and up, and then they did something like this. The one theory that I think holds weight is that DICE is just simply trying uh, to stop people from leaving their game. A lot of people apparently are picking it up and then leaving after a couple of games and never coming back. And obviously because this is a games as service, they want people to be playing for long stretches so that they're more likely to buy those microtransactions, to have people uh, join and then leave and then never play the game ever again just isn't good for DICE or EA. And so they're trying to resolve that issue. But I don't know if that's the reason why people are leaving. At least for me personally, this is probably one of the worst games as a service that is out there. To give a really good stark contrast, if we take a look at Call of Duty, even though it has its own host of issues, one thing I think they've done reasonably well is that there has been a constant amount of content and changes, bringing in new game modes every couple of weeks. They've actually introduced a lot of maps since the release of the game, way more than anything that Battlefield did within the first six months and that game has only been out for like a month or more and so if you compare the two like it is a night and day difference I feel like I have way more incentive to go play the new Call of Duty because I know there's going to be more things to enjoy and I definitely don't feel the same way when it comes to Battlefield I just don't think that DICE has done even close to a good job when it comes to their live service model and so all in all while personally I did enjoy going back and playing on this classic map I can fully understand why people are unsatisfied with this update to have a change so significant, especially a part of the game that uh, the vast majority of the player base enjoyed, and it was one of the reasons why they continued to play the game, uh, to all of a sudden just kind of throw that out the window uh, isn't really a good look. If you're trying to maintain your player base or gain more players, uh, having an unhappy community probably isn't the best way of going about it, but I guess time will tell on that one. The next one comes from Tyler, and it is, what do you think about having more sensitivity options for Siege, like being able to change your sensitivity for snipers or secondaries. I feel like it would be a nice quality of life change. What are your thoughts? Absolutely. I'm actually kind of surprised that there aren't more sensitivity options, especially with the introduction of Kali. It just made it even more obvious. Because she has that five times and 12 times optic, it can feel a little wonky to get comfortable with her controls. And so if people had the ability to either increase or decrease the sensitivity when you were using certain scopes or certain operators or anything along those lines, I think that that would be a nice quality of life improvement. I honestly cannot think of really many reasons 
for why this shouldn't be a thing. It may require obviously more development time, it might make things a bit more complicated, but I think there would be a, a healthy part of the community that would find enjoyment and use out of this kind of a feature. And so in general, I 100% agree with you on this one. It's pretty much standard in a lot of other video games out there, and I would kind of hope that this would eventually make its way into Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is what it for today's episode of Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video. Do you think that Kali needs to have some sort of counter introduced into Rainbow Six Siege? Do you think that she's too strong? Do you think that she's in a well-balanced state right now? Give me your guys' thoughts down below. As always, if you'd like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can also leave a comment or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. But until next time, guys, have a good one and take it easy.